technology is naturally well suited to the capture of carbon dioxide from minerals-based processing technologies. So in Australia, on our current plant, we separate CO2 from magnesium carbonate, produce a magnesium oxide that then goes into other products. That technology, with a bit of uh, improvement, was able to be applied to the cement and lime industries, which currently don't have a, a solid roadmap to the capture of carbon dioxide. So what we needed was some funding, some industry support, uh, and some research and development partners to help us to increase the temperature of the process, to, uh, to, improve, the, uh, to improve the efficiency of both the process side and of the uh, combustion side, and, uh, and to improve the, I suppose, the uh, uh, performance and operability of the process. And so that's what Lilac has really enabled for Calix. Okay, so the Lilac project has achieved a lot over its three and a half year time period. Uh, what it has done is taken the existing technology, it's increased the temperature at which it's able to operate, which is necessary for the uh, cement and lime industries. It's improved the efficiency on both the process and the furnace side. And it's also improved the operability by giving us increased uh, visibility into what, what's happening inside the process. And that, that's both through the engineering uh, part of the project and through the R&D part of the project, which models the process, which then feeds its outcomes back into the engineering. Well, I think that for me personally, the biggest learning has been parallel, parallelizing that process, making it concurrent. Uh, it's, it's very unusual for an engineering project to run those two things on top of each other because there are risks of scope changes which result in budget overruns or schedule overruns. So really, for me personally, that's been the biggest learning. Running the two together, uh, having a small, uh, a small team rather than a large team that relies heavily on suppliers and contractors and uh, experts in the field uh, and, and basically delegating small distinct packages of work to those people to get the job done. Well, the biggest challenge going forward is going to be taking this technology which has been demonstrated at this scale and it's going to be scaling it up to a full scale for cement. So, oh, and, and lime, of course. So for cement, it's about a 20 times increase in scale. Lilac is 5% the throughput of a full scale cement plant. For lime, it's probably a 30%, uh, 30 to 50% scale. So scaling it up to a full, uh, full size is going to be the biggest challenge for the technology. The thing that I'm most proud of in Lilac is uh, a trial that we ran in Australia on our existing Backers Marsh plant. We had a concept come out of the research and development phase of the project, which, uh, which was quite ambitious and which we weren't able to, at that time, prove using our modelling. So what I realised is that we were able to do a reconfiguration of our existing plant using some high temperature ducting, some blanking flanges, uh, some reverse flow through some pipes and things like that. And we were able to actually demonstrate this concept using our existing equipment and bring those learnings back over to Lilac. So for me, running that trial was, uh, is the thing that I'm most personally proud of on Lilac. At the very least, Lilac will increase the rate of acceptance for carbon capture within the cement and lime industries. But if we're successful, it will enable that carbon capture in a way that is economically attractive. So the societal benefit of carbon capture will be supported by the industry simply because it is the best option.